Now let's do a second project. As you can see, it's a modified version of the first one. You can see the final effect on the right side of the screen right now. Everything stays the same as in the first project. All the changes that appear are only in the nav tag. And in our eight elements, which now look like this. Each of them has a different background color. We have separated them to the 100% of the width of the nav. So 100% of the width of our website. And after hovering on them, we'll get this effect. If we spread our browser window, we have the same effect as before. So as I said, nothing actually changed except our nav tag and our A elements. Let's take a look on my HTML file. Here we can see that barely nothing changed in it. All I did in here is placing a different class to each of my A elements in our nav tag, just so we could refer to them separately, giving them different background colors. So our starting project looks like this. Everything stays the same except our nav tag. And we want it to look at the end just like this. So let's get started. Let's go to our style CSS file. As you can see, we have already placed some CSS rules. So we have this appearance of our website. The one thing that is lacking, it doesn't matter, but we also got a footer CSS rule with the background color set to white. We don't focus on that in this video. So now let's start to work with our nav tag. First, let's get separate colors for each hour A tag. So the changes appearing to them will be more visible to us. We have those classes BTN1, 2, 3, and 4. So we can refer to them like this. First, we will have our nav tag to style. Then inside our nav tag, all the A tags we would like to style. And then we can refer to all our A tags with the separate classes. For example, A, B, T, and 1. As you may guess, I could only refer to it with the class of BTA1, like this. The effect would be the same, but I do this for us to see the clarity of the code that represents our whole structure where we have the wrapper div, then we have our nav tag, then the a tags inside this nav tag, then particular a tags with the classes, then we have our header, our main and our footer, just like in our HTML, it's good to keep code clean and readable, especially at the beginning of our work and learning. So placing these long selectors does no harm to anybody and we can keep it like this. We want our first A tag to have a background color of burly wood, something like this. We can see it works. All now we can do is copy the whole thing, paste it right here, right here, and right here and let's change the numbers btn2 btn3 and btn4 we want our btn2 to have the color of deep sky blue btn3 to be dark cyan and our last one which is btn4 which is btn4 to be royal blue exactly like this and we can see the effect already on our screen now let's refer to all our a tags where we created the row 
which is referring to all our eight elements in our navigation. Let's set its font size to 20 pixels. It's font family. Now, I don't know if I said this before, but you can also use useful Emmet shortcuts placing your properties. Instead of typing font family, the shortcut is FF and we will get font family from there. For example, text decoration is TD, so we can get text decoration right here, text align is TA, and you can experiment and try many combinations for yourself. For example, BGC is background color. You will get used to them quickly, how it's fine to you, get familiar with these properties, but trust me, later in your work, these shortcuts will be very, very useful. So what I wanted is the font family. Let's set it to Arial like this. Let's change its color to white so we can see nicely the text inside our A elements. Now let's focus on some text properties. As I said, TD is the text decoration with the value of none already, which gets rid of the underline. Now TT, which is text transform, already with the uppercase value, which is really nice. And our buttons start to look like this. Now let's focus on the disadvantages of the inline elements. As you can see, I will zoom it a little bit so you can see it better. We have this, these little spaces around our all elements. As you can see, we have set no margin and no padding to all the elements. And still we can see those little spaces when our elements go to the new line. And when in the same line, when one element ends and next element starts, which you can see Right here, we have this horizontal little lines and those vertical. Even if we didn't place any margin or any padding to them, they're still here. Now we can get rid of those little horizontal line just by changing our elements from inline, which they are by default, pointing by the display property to, for example, inline block. Let's see the effect. Now we can see we got rid of those horizontal lines, but we still got those vertical ones. If we zoom it out and have all the elements in one line, we can see they are still there. And there are two ways of getting rid of those. The first one is going to the HTML code and what you can see right here are the spaces made by breaking the line in the code editor. Because as you may remember, the A elements place themselves in the code editor by default without going to a new line. As the inline elements, which they are. Let me get this stretched a little bit. Now we can see that I deleted those enters in my code editor. And let's try to save our file. And we can see that those spaces disappeared. We got rid of those spaces between our elements. That's the reason that I said that the inline elements might be really problematic. And I don't recommend using this trick because the beautify extension in our case might let us save file in this way. In other cases, it might not to let us this. But first of all, the appearance of our website shouldn't depend on the HTML code at all, especially 
at the aligning of our code because if someone preferences are to keep our a tags one below each other because it's more readable like this our elements fall apart once again and have those spaces once again besides it's good to keep the items of our navigation one below each other because it's obvious clean and readable now let's get back our screen to normal like this and I will show you the second way of dealing with this problem which is also a trick but not so invasive as changing the HTML code in our code editor what we have to do is to go to the parent element of the elements we want to style and set the parent elements font size to zero let's see if it works and as we can see, it worked pretty fine. As I said, it's kind of stupid way, but it works and it doesn't cause any problems. We keeping our HTML code clean with it and everything works fine. All you have to remember with this trick is when we place the font size to zero to the parent element, our element, which we style, needs to have specified its font size precisely. As you can see right here because when I comment it it will inherit its font size from its parent which will be zero so practically invisible so this is what we need to keep the attention to and this way we can style our elements now let's set the width and the height of our elements we can do this because we use displayed inline block so as we know, we can specify the size of our elements. At the same time, our elements can be displayed next to each other in one line. So let's do it. Let's set their width to 25% and their height to 50 pixels, for example. This is the effect we'll get. In the previous project, we set our element's height and width by its padding, which is also correct. But now I wanted to show you the second way that we can specify the width and the height of our elements with those properties you can see right here. And why I showed you this trick with the font size of zero, because without it, our elements would fall apart because of those little spaces. And even now, when I place the width of our elements to 25%, so four equal elements should fit perfectly to one line, they are not. I can try to decrease this value like this. You can see it worked somehow, but we have the space right here and we have those spaces so it doesn't look really good. All we want to have is nice and equal 25% and the font size of the parent set to zero. So our buttons are equally spread on our website and look good. Now we have to center the text inside our buttons. So let's try to do it. First, let's try text align property with the value of center and we can see that now our text is equally centered in our elements from the left and the right but now how should we center it from the top and the bottom the answer is line height property which sets height of the text right here and our text is always in the center of this line. So the trick is to set the line height the same as the height of our element. So 50 pixels like this. Let's see if it works. And you can see it works perfectly fine. 
now our navigation looks how it's supposed to as we can see on our final project all we have to do now is to create this hover effect so let's do it let's refer to all our nav a elements with the pseudo class of hover like this and I want to show you something why I placed the CSS rule right here let's change its background color for now to white and its color to black let's see if it works as you can see it works pretty fine and I did this because if I cut it from here and placed it after our overall nav a CSS rule like this only the color would change and the background color stays the same and why is that it's because of the cascading you can see that our hover rule has two bronze medals from the nav tag and the a tag and one silver medal from the pseudo class so it's the same important as these separate rules which have also two bronze medal from the nav tag and the a tag and one silver medal from the class so since those rules have the same importance the rule below will be applied so we have specified background color right here but after this color we specified separate colors for all our a tags so this background color isn't applied so the order matters at this point in this situation since our rules are equally important and intuitively we place the hover rules always directly below the elements we styled so it's good to style or our a elements and at the end place the hover rule for all our elements since this css rule has the same importance as this one and this one and this one and this one the last one will be applied so every our a tag will get white background color and black color what we have to do in this hover pseudo class is this effect with this black thick line at the bottom of our elements so let's do this and as you may guess this effect is acquired by the border bottom property with the value of 8 pixels solid black let's see if it works you can see it works but our border goes below our elements and creates this 8 pixels free space between our nav tag and our header as you can see it destroys the structure of our website because by default the box sizing of all our elements is set to content box so the border expands our element just like the padding would but while resetting our style sheet at the beginning of the project we can set the box sizing property to border box and then we know that after adding a border or in this case only the bottom border our element will stay the same and the border will take the content space of the element let's see if this will happen and as you can see the effect will be exactly like this this is our starting project this is our final project and as you can see they are the same so this is what I wanted to show you in this project and now let's go to another project